So I was thinking what kind of tutorial I can make from Monday to Thursday that I can edit and upload in the same day for you guys so you can learn. I've done the Swell Dynamic Block tutorial and it was well received in LinkedIn, not so much in the YouTube views, which is what counts for me so it can keeps me motivated and create more tutorial for you guys, but still good. If you have downloaded the Swell Dynamic Block, leave it in the comments below so I can know how many people downloaded because I cannot find out from the Google Drive path how many people actually downloaded the Swell Dynamic Block. Enough chit chat, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create the dynamic block for permeable paving. So basically we will need parameters such as depth, porosity, length, width, area, and then we'll calculate the volume. And we, as the swell, we had the increase in length arrow and the width as well. I was kind of split whether I should have it as an increment because usually permeable paving is found within car parking base. But then I remember it's in aisles as well. So therefore I left it free for you guys to edit as how you like. So it's not by increments, but we could have done it by increments of 100 mil, but yeah, that's minor detail. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's go to a clean, fresh drawing. All we have to do is draw a polyline. So basically let's bring this one on. So we draw a polyline and at zero, zero, always center, let's say 10 meters and by five, and then again by 10, and then C enter for close. Then all we make sure our geometric center is enabled. We're gonna move it to center and let's add a hatch for it. So. To do that, we just go to our hatch, we use the select option, and then permeable paving, usually they do blocks, sometimes they do tarmac, so don't be surprised. Now, all we have to do is select, type block, hit enter, and if you wanna follow up the commands, or if you, I haven't said what command I used, you can look at the bottom left of the screen. So let's name it. See, actually, let's name it uh, permeable block. Hit enter, select the center, or if you had the center already predefined in the settings window of the block, right click block editor. Now, as we did with the swell tutorial, we're gonna use the auto constraint again. We're gonna hit S enter for the settings and we're gonna make sure parallel, perpendicular, tangent, we don't need it and equal is selected. So we select everything, hit enter. And now we're gonna go to our block editor tab. We're gonna go to the dimensional panel and we're gonna select linear. We're gonna make sure this red circle appears and we're gonna do it the same for here. So that is our length. So we change D1 to length. And then we're gonna do again linear for the width. So make sure it pops appears here and the same with here and rename that D1 into width. Now we're gonna bring our parameters manager by clicking this button and we're gonna create some new parameters. So the first parameter we need is the depth. Then we need the porosity because you 0.3, 0.25, depends what you want. And then we need the area and then the volume. So the area is calculated by length times the width. The depth we're gonna predefine it for now as 0.45, porosity 0.3, and then the volume equals to area times the depth times the porosity. There you go. And if we close the block editor and save the changes, you can see the window is here in your properties window. And if we change, let's say the width to 10, it changes it. And if we did five, it change length, let's say 25. If you write reset block, you can see the reset. For some reason, my arrow didn't appear. So let's go have a look. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna change the width, how it appears because we did from top to bottom. So all I have to do is just, just to two grips, or actually I'll delete it and create a new one. So from the top to the bottom, there we go. And we change this one to width. Nobody's perfect, I know. And yeah, so we just need to make sure length times width. Hit enter. 
close block editor, save changes, and there you go. You have as well here the tracking as well feature. Now, if we change the depth, let's say to one meter, yeah, let me pan out the properties menu just so you can see. You can see if we change the depth to one, the volume increases. If we change the depth to 0.5, the volume decreases as well. The area obviously remains the same unless we change the length or the width. And that's how we do it. So if you found this tutorial useful, hit the like button so it can motivate me and create more videos. If you loved it, smash the subscribe button and share this video with your colleagues or actually share the dynamic block with your colleagues. And if they ask where you got it from, tell them from Civil Textures so we can get this community growing. If you haven't become a member to our website, please become one. I'm like literally begging you guys as I want to create a community where everyone, if anyone has any questions regarding the civil engineering industry, can ask them in that forum and people can answer the questions. So it's a good cause. So join. Other than that, I hope you stay safe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.